Hello. We are live and um, we've got some questions here to go through and as ever I'd be happy to uh, field any live questions that come through um, as we go hoping that uh, we're good on audio. Um, let me know if we are not. Um, well, actually let me know if we are because yeah. anyway. Um, so uh, we've got some questions here. So um, let's get right into it. Just Discussing looking after your implants when you get pregnant. So, um, so this is um, a question I get asked a lot on both sides, meaning that I get asked it um, before. Um, I find the exact question. I get asked it before um, people have um, the implants, but also when people have got implants, they're worried. Um, what happens if they get pregnant? And the answer is it is fine to get pregnant if you've got implants in. There is absolutely fine to do that. And I'm not sure what, uh, how you can look after your implants when you get pregnant. Um, but the issues with pregnancy and, and breast implants, first of all, there's no problem with breastfeeding. Um, if you have had, I usually use what's called an inframammary incision, which is in the fold of your bra. And so if you have an inframammary incision, then the, 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 the breast itself is, um, is um, the breast tissue is not cut through. So the ducts aren't cut through. So assuming you can breastfeed uh, anyway, because some people can't breastfeed, there'll be no changing whether or not you'll be able to breastfeed with having implants. And so there's no worry about having implants in if you have a, child the problem with having implants in if you have a child is that the size and the shape of your breasts change and so the reason you had implants in the first place was you're un unhappy with your breasts and so it might change in an adverse way it might not but that is the problem so if i'm talking to someone prior to having implants i'd always say look wait until you've finished your family until you um have implants because if you have children then it can affect them if but some people say well that might be many years in which case that's fine and it, as in this case this patient already has implants and saying how can i look after my implants um when i'm pregnant um and the answer is i would say don't worry about it at all the reason that the size and the shape of your breast changes is because the skin is stretched and that happens when you go when you breastfeed because the breasts get bigger and then when you stop breastfeeding the breasts get smaller the longer the bigger the long the more the skin is stretched so the less time you breastfeed i guess you could argue is better for the stretching of the skin, but breastfeeding is good for your child. I think it's recommended these days, so I don't want you not, not to breastfeed, um, but that's the only thing I can think of that might affect the, the, the shape of your breasts. Um, there's not a lot else you can do to look after your implants, if you like, when you get pregnant. So just enjoy your pregnancy, enjoy your child, don't worry about it. The breasts will probably get bigger when you have the child um, and with, uh, with the milk and what have you. And then the hope is they'll go back to how they were before. They might not, they might stay a bit bigger, they might go smaller, they might sit lower, things might happen, which you might be happy with or you might not. And if you're not, we'll see if we can do something about it. But if, you know, if, if it's okay, then don't worry about it at all. So no specific things to do if you're pregnant but just enjoy the pregnancy and don't worry about it um and, and see what happens wearing earrings after having a split earlobe repair well there's different ways of repairing the split earlobe the common way of repairing the split earlobe is just um to close up the split uh, and that gives you a straight line scar and then you have to have your scar uh, your ear pierced to just slightly offset the scar um at a, after a couple of months once it's all healed um, you don't want to have it pierced to the top of the scar because the, the scar will be weaker than normal tissue and so an earring could pull through. This particular question is coming from a patient of mine who has had the double flap technique, which is a technique that I do where you bring two flaps of skin underneath the uh, earlobe repair so that you keep, the, um, you keep the hole in the original place because it matches the other side. Often people say, well, I've got my hole symmetrical and I want to keep the earring in the place where it was initially, in which case you can do this double flap technique and that keeps the hole. And so she's wearing studs and I recently saw her in the clinic, but she forgot to ask me um, when she could wear bigger earrings, I think. Or, or what was the question? When, when um, is it okay for me to wear different and possibly heavier earrings now? Okay, um, so yes, uh, the double flap technique does allow you to wear earrings. It's always going to be weaker than normal skin. So uh, I wouldn't wear big ding danglers. And if you could pull 
through just like the normal side could pull through so you, but if obviously you know you want to wear the earrings that you like so yes be careful don't wear too them too big for too long but yes you can start wearing slightly bigger impart, um, earrings because it's been a couple of i think has it been it's been probably I put, actually i saw you the other day and it was six weeks so it's been you know six six weeks or so so now you can start wearing bigger ones you know that is when to do wound debridement now this is a patient who's been in touch with me who has is having some problems she um I, I, uh, I didn't do the original surgery she's had what looks like um she's got breast implants in and it looks like she's had a lift with implants and she's got a wound breakdown and she's feeling a little bit um, um worried about progress understandably so it is really worrying when you have problems but the number one thing that i would say to you and, and to anyone is stay close with your surgeon a lot of people go on these forums and contact me on facebook and things i'm very happy to help but it, you know if i um, i'm not seeing you and i obviously didn't do the original surgery so i don't know exactly what's gone on then it's stay close to your original surgeon and go with the original surgeon's advice but my in general terms my advice what she what's happened with her is she's had a breakdown with a lift with implants and she feels that she's been left for six weeks and now she's had having a debridement where the, the, the wound's been cleaned and she feels it should have been done before now i have to say my view is that i do tend to leave it if people do have wound healing problems um the problem with doing wound debridement, so when we take someone to theatre and debride a wound, that means removing any dead tissue. What we do is we want to take it back to healthy, uh, healthy tissue. And so there is a tendency to debride a little bit more tissue because you don't want to only remove the dead tissue. You want to get down to definitely living tissue. So you're, that interface between the living and the dead, you'll tend to take away more when you do a wound debridement. Whereas if you let things separate, themselves then the exactly amount of dead tissue and the exact amount of living tissue the hope is that you'll the dead tissue will form like a scab or an scar um, and then that scab separates and then you're just left with healthy tissue and so actually although it's horrible having black bits of skin and scabs and things it's better to leave it like that because you'll get the maximum amount of tissue left behind and this is particularly important when you've had something like a live with implants because you want to have enough cover over the implant if the implant gets exposed you have to remove it. And this is one of the reasons why lifted implants is such a big deal. It's a big operation. There's a lot of potential complications, and this is one of them, wound healing problems. And if the wound opens up, opens up and the implant gets exposed, you have to remove it. So this is a problem with a lift with implants, but I don't think, from a sort of surgical point of view, I don't feel that she's been neglected by having it left for six weeks, uh, although she may psychologically feel neglected if the surgeon hasn't kept close with her and explained this to her. But I think uh, it's not unreasonable to leave the tissues to, to, to separate as long as they're not getting infected and you're not getting ill and they're getting red and angry. And if, they, if you get an obvious infection, then you have to remove that dead tissue. So that would force you to go and have a debridement if things are not looking good. And, um, and, and so you might want to go and do that. But I think um, a lift with implants is a big deal. This sort of thing is horrible when it happens. I'm sure the surgeon will be very distressed and have finding it hard to, to, to um, um, not hard to deal with, but, but, it, but it does knock us back, to be honest with you. I know it knocks you as patients back a lot more because you have the complication, but it is one of the difficult parts of the job, to be honest, dealing with complications. And so um, I'm sure the sur your surgeon will be wanting to get the best result possible for you. So stick close with them and uh, by all means, keep in touch with me on Facebook and I'll put my uh, opinion in, but uh, I'm always thinking it's best to be talking to your surgeon, uh, ideally. Uh, and now we've got t types of tummy tuck, uh, which is the last question, all in fair warn. Um, last question. Um, types of tummy tuck, right. So types of tummy tuck, a bit like facelifts, uh, well, a bit like Mastapex, he's actually thinking about it, a bit like any of these skin tightening uh, operations basically facelift mastopexy and tummy tuck are all skin tightening operations there's a range and the range va varies basically along how much scarring you have um, and there's some lesser scarring ones uh, and oh, no with facelift there's others no far scarring ones um, so there's lesser scarring ones up to more scarring ones and basically when you talk about it everyone wants the lesser scarring ones so basically with tummy tuck let's stick to the point or digress too much with tummy tuck you've got a mini tummy tuck then you've got a full tummy tuck then you've got a fleur-de-lis tummy tuck 
um, and then you've got a circumferential belt lipectomy. So um, going through those, a mini tummy tuck gives you a scar slightly longer than the cesarean scar, and there's no scar around the belly button. So there's only one scar in the pubic uh, area, just above the level of the pubic hair. It's, uh, it's still quite a long scar, but it's uh, shorter than with a full tummy tuck. Uh, but the problem is the shorter you make the scar, the less skin you can remove. And the whole point of having the surgery is to remove the skin. So it is good, a mini tummy tuck. It is less downtime, cheaper, less complications, but it is less of a result. So the, the um, normal, I, I guess, um, or the most common type of tummy tuck is what we call a full tummy tuck. And that gives a longer scar. Scar goes from hip to hip. And there's also a scar around the belly button. Now, the fact that there's a scar around the belly button means you can pull the tissues down above the belly button. With a mini tummy tuck, you can't pull any tissues above the belly button down. You can't get that pull through because the belly button is a sort of, um, is a set point and you can't really pull the tissue above it down. So it, the mini tummy tuck's really good for that uh, skin in the pubic area, just above your cesarean scar or just going above your pubic hair. Mini tummy tuck tightens that skin, but doesn't do anything to the sides, doesn't do anything above the belly button. Full tummy tuck, gets the width of the, the tummy and uh, pulls above the belly button, uh, pulls that tissue down. Uh, also in a full tummy tuck, you can, you can repair the, diver the uh, rectus muscles. We call it diverification of the rectus muscles. The rectus muscles are your six pack and it's often splayed apart. When you have children or when you put on weight, those muscles get pulled apart. When you go to the gym, you work out those muscles, make them as strong as you can. But you can't bring them back together again. You can make them stronger, but they'll still stay apart. So when you lift your head up off the bed, you can sometimes feel a gap just above the belly button. So that can be repaired when you do a full tummy tuck, can't be repaired with a mini tummy tuck. Um, so a full tummy tuck is, is the classic um, operation or the common operation. Uh, moving on from a full tummy tuck, there are other types you can do. Fleur de lis is like an inverted T. It has a straight line down uh, scar here, as well as a scar in the, in the pubic area. Again, it's more scarring, but more tissue gets removed. In a tummy tuck, you remove tissue in an up and down direction. Um, because you just get one scar with a fleur de lis because you get two two scars you can get the it's a t you can move that you can take the tissue out on a side by side direction as well as an up and down direction fleur de lis really for someone who's had a massive weight loss who's got a lot of excess skin in the tummy one of the problems with the fleur de lis is it's more difficult to hide the scar because there's a scar going straight down the middle looks like you've had a laparotomy um so that is a problem Again, you've got to balance the scarring with regards to the shape. Um, the other type of, type of um, tummy tuck you can do is a, a circumferential where you go all the way around. So you make a, a, a cut, cut skin from the back and the front, uh, and that's called a belt lipectomy or a body lift. Um, and that is a big deal. It's a big operation. You need to be turned during theater. Anytime you have to be turned during the operation, so you're under anesthetic, you're asleep, and we have to turn you. We either have to turn you on your front then on your back, or you have to do your one side, the other side, and then your, then your front. So anytime you have to be turned, it's a big deal. That takes all day, it's a big operation, and it's a big long scar all the way around. But again, it takes the tissues out. And the main thing about a belt uh, lipectomy is that it gets the side bits, really gets the side bits, tightens those bits down. Um, so if you've got a lot of fullness on the sides, a belt lipectomy can be an option. The other thing that you can do, and you, usually it's a full tummy tuck that's combined this, is uh, do some liposuction at the time of the tummy tuck. Again, gets getting those side bits. Uh, that might be another option if you didn't want to go the whole hog for the belt lipectomy, maybe a full tummy tuck with a bit of liposuction to the side bits to help to contour those areas. So those are your options with um, tummy tuck. Um, I hope that has been helpful and oh uh and been um uh useful and don't worry lisa i've just seen your questions that's excellent so we've got a live question coming in i just had a quick question about numbness still have a bit on my right side around my implant but not all of it is numb is that normal thanks yes blimey um lisa you, you're going let's go back a bit it's been a while isn't it um how long is it? It's got to be a good few months. What is it? Six months, I'm going to say. Um, anyway, I think you're quite a way down the line now. And um, so the thing about breast, so as I say, I make the inflammatory memory incision, so I don't cut anything in the breast. I don't cut any nerves. I don't cut any milk ducts, anything like that. But often when you have breast implants, you get funny feelings. You either get numbness. March, God, look at that. And I'm always off by the wrong way i thought six months i thought i've been generous there so more than six months so getting on for a year really um so uh, whenever you have uh, uh implants in whenever you stretch the skin 
you can get funny feelings in the skin, numbness, overly sensitive. In fact, overly sensitive is worse than numbness. Um, and I usually say this, this settles, this usually settles. Now, um, it's number first point, if it's gonna settle, it can take a long time, nine or 12 months, so we're like nine months now. Um, so in nine months now, uh, or what are we now? Anyway, whatever March to now is nine, it is again, 10 months. So we're quite a long time now. So I normally say if nerves are gonna come back to life, they can take nine or 10 months for, to, for them to come back to life. So it might still come back to life. It's not unusual for nerves to take, you know, up to a year for them to come back to life. And we said that it's quite a long time now. So it might not. So occasionally you can get a persistent problem with numbness or funny feelings. I have to say, I've never had any patients who've had a real problem with it. So I think what happens is that you actually, it either gets better over time, or you just sort of learn to live with it and it doesn't actually bother you that much because often it's a bit here or maybe a bit around the scar, it's not like a big thing. So it might be persistent. I couldn't guarantee it 100% get better, but don't be, don't write it off. It might still get better. But even if it doesn't get better, what happens, I think you just sort of learn to live with it. It, does, it doesn't become a problem. I'm guessing you've probably got an appointment to come back to the clinic if you haven't give us a shout and I'll see you and we can talk about this sort of stuff. But yeah, the bottom line is don't worry about it. A uh, bit, bit around side around my implant, not, yeah, so don't, don't worry about it. It's all, um, oh, what's going on here? It's all fine. Um, I got a load of, um, not bad, just, yeah. So I think if, hopefully it will continue to improve in time. Let's see how it goes and, um, and uh, give, give it time. Time's, a, time's the best thing. So that is, I very much salute you, Lisa, for giving me a, a question there. I'm gonna like every single question that you asked. Thank you for that. Um, now is the time for me to check out. Uh, I'm gonna scan the questions. If there's anything else that comes out of this, then I will, as ever, pick it up for next week. Hope that's been helpful. And looking forward to seeing you all next week, same time, same place, or maybe not same place, similar place. And uh, um, love you lots and happy new year a bit late to say that but anyway i'm sort of said it happy new year and uh check out bye